Formula 1 returns to Canada for the opening round of the 2021 season, this being the first opportunity to really see the true performance full of the cars out on track, as in pre-season's testing you can never be sure what fuel loads or how competitive the cars are running. But from the off it looked like Alfa Romeo were strong title contenders. The AR21 looked like a very competitive car all round and was boosted by straight line speed due to the powerful new Ferrari 066 engine for this year. Toyota though, the defending constructed champions looked to be on the back foot. The Japanese outfit were experiencing some technical difficulties with electrical issues that didn't crop up throughout any of the days of pre-season testing. However, these issues may be small, but it was preventing the team from running anywhere near full power on the engine. And it was Renault that looked to be the closest competitors to Alfa Romeo to start off the season. His new star driver, three-time world champion Fernando Alonso, looking to get back to his winning ways, now in his third stint with the French outfit, looking to take a win on return. And Alfa Tari was the surprise of practice, with Sergio Setacamera and a re-energised Pierre Gasly looking very competitive on one lap pace, and also strong on long run pace, maybe even an outside shot for a podium. However, third practice would end swiftly for Josh Terry and Max Verstappen as coming into the final chicane, Max Verstappen massive, massively missed his breaking point and made contact with the Alfa Romeo, ending both their sessions early, but both would escape without penalties. Hey guys, Renault here. Welcome back to Formula 1, the start of the 2021 season here at the newest venue that we have to start the season with, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Been this way now for a couple of seasons, and obviously I like starting the season here in Canada, but Ferrari will not like starting the season down in P16 with Charles Leclerc, meaning the Scuderia knew it was going to be a struggle for the opening rounds with their pretty... with their car they're struggling to understand, but P16 for their star driver is definitely not where they're expecting it to be. We've got Lando Norris there, the young Brit, starting in P7 in the McLaren. That's as good as it's going to get because this car cannot be developed throughout the season. Now then, onto the very first formation lap of this new season. As you saw there, it was a Renault 1 pole. And Alfa Romeo up there as well, so just as it was in practice, the teams that look to be up there in front of practice it's look like they're starting there early on in the season as well. And it's like all the cars get away for the very first formation lap. And it's Fernando Alonso. You'd never known he'd been away since 2018. The Spaniard, on his first race back, in his first qualifying session back, puts the new Renault RS37 on pole position with a dominant lap, three tenths quicker than anyone else. We got ourselves around up there as well. Not quite where I want to be starting. We got our teammate K Mag there in P2. We're starting still though inside the top six in a very competitive position with an Alfa Romeo car which has great drivability. As we found out through practice so far, it's really easy to set it up. So even if the pace isn't there, you can really extract the maximum from it. Although that's something Toyota may be having an issue with. The electrical issues plaguing the team all throughout practice means they're not really at risk of retiring due to these issues, but they can't run anywhere near full power. And you've got Mercedes, look like once again, looks like for another season they've gone and outsmarted themselves, continuing now with the DAS system. I and mean, when it works for them, it really works, as Kvyat took a podium here in 2019, but it hasn't really gone anywhere, anything good for them since, they've been struggling towards the mid-pack, but now looking at ourselves, starting P5 here for the first race of this new season, behind Sergio Sete Camera in the Alfa Tauri, you know they were looking good, the Honda engines come on leaps and bounds over the, over the winter as well. And P4 for the Brazilian, maybe even be an outshot of the top five, maybe even the podium, see how things go, depending on how fast that car is in a straight line. He had a really good race here in his debut season last year, so we're looking to carry that over now in the game, but it's in the dry this time, as we come to the five red lights to the start of the new Formula 1 season. Lights out, and away we go. It's like a pretty even start there from the front here. Looks like Alonso though with the, with the Avenger after the start. Actually pulled away and came out of the air, gets a, a, a poor second phase. We've got the inside line of one of the, uh, one of the cars there. Obviously, he's going to come out and try to go in the outside line now with Mick Schumacher. He moves things out in his first race from McLaren, starting so inside the podium places. This will be a good, a good move there for the German so far. It's like trying to force out right now into the chicane. He's had to sign there behind the 2019 Drivers World Champion. And we've got Sergio Sete Camaro once again looking venture up behind us, the 2019 F2 champion. He's part of the Rebel Academy and in the words of Helmut Marko, did enough to add a drive at Red Bull, but we know see opening up. He has to spend another year in the junior team. And so far he's the lead Red Bull driver in this race. And he's gonna have a little back up inside like the after time. He's a monster in a straight line. He even sometimes gonna go the long way around the outside where he gives us the inside line for the next corner of that chicane. He's almost holding in front there. Oldzini gonna aggressively cut across the nose there of City Camara. Looking now into the head, being able to go defensive. He can go for a move maybe he thinks about it. Has a little look to the inside line, but can't do anything with it. And you've got one of the rebels there looking to make a move on one of the toes Red Bull. Really not having the best qualifying to start of the season, not, not really where they thought they'd be, they thought they'd be a lot further up after their pre-season testing pace with Verstappen now by looking very competitive there. But this being a straight line speed track, maybe Red Bull have gone a little bit too draggy with their car, understanding their new low and understand their new 
the new car set with the front wing with have, having the thinner nose. And they're going now through to the end of the final. All the cars are going to make it through the wall of champions now onto the second lap now of the Grand Prix. Now things are already starting to spread out a little bit up front, so maybe even starting to get a picture of how the season's going to look already. But Alonso came out. Mick Schumacher ourselves and, and you've got the midfield fight right behind him, Sergio Seto Camara still. And we're gonna keep mentioning in Alpha Tauri car. When when they're back with Alpha Tauri last year and even as Torosso spent a lot of the seasons towards the back of the grid, haven't really been anywhere near being competitive since 2016. Well Sergio Seto Camara running in the side of the top five. And we're gonna be having gonna have a load of eyes on him now because Red Bull are gonna be really under pressure to promote him if he can keep putting up performances like this. Of course, no DRS yet, that won't be activated until the start of the next lap. You get your first two laps without DRS or, and, or the first two laps after a safety car period. But if, if it's a VSC or just normal yellows, then you'll be back to using DRS as soon as possible. And then on to lap five, we've been building up the pace now, getting used to this car now, for, as, as is everyone now in this first race of the season. We haven't managed to drop the Seti Camaro behind us, but we, we've both been pushing away now to catch up to Mick Schumacher in that McLaren. Of course, which is, the McLaren that is effectively last year's car, but with a few new upgrades through this year. So it's still running last year's Renault engine, badged as Vipe for this year. Now coming to the hairpin, they have a little bit of a game, very close under braking, so maybe the tyre is starting to go off already for Mitch Schumacher. Because we, we, with testing days now being limited, and jumping from the Williams to the McLaren, and these two cars are going to be very, very different concepts. I mean, Schumacher is he's now in a better car than the Williams. We're still going to have to try and add a line out to drive. We're going to get around the outside line here of Mitch Schumacher now into final chicane. Schumacher going to try and find it, but he's pinching there to the epic. He gets a really poor line, gets a really compromised line there. Now we get a double bit of DRS now to pull away. Now we've got Seti Camaro now in the Alpha Tauri. Got a masterclass here last year. He's going to try and make a move now on the 2019 World Champion. He makes the move stick. The Alpha Tauri is coming alive now in this, in this opening laps at the hands of that Brazilian. But then you've also got Pierre Gasly not too far behind him, so the Alpha Tauri really looks like he could be a dark horse in these early rounds. As is often the case when the team was Toro, so they are often most competitive at the start of the year, but they do tend to drop away as the season goes on. But now looking a bit further on our teammate, Kevin Magnussen now, is going to be the first driver in to make the first pit stop of the 2021 season. You're going to go Alfa, Alfa Romeo here pulling the trigger, because I might, I might end up getting confused between Alfa Tauri and Alfa Romeo if both these teams keep fighting towards the front. Be set medium size, a pretty good pistol there. Look a little bit slow on the rear tyres, but still, all the tyres are, are attached to the car, and that's all that matters now. You can rejoin it now, back now into turn, into turn two as it is. You, you cut out the first one, mainly due to safety reasons. They're going to rejoin there in the mid pack. Maybe Sabas will be one of the Williams. You need to clear them, but it has to come out there and stick behind the Williams there. So, not the best place for K Mag in the ball to rejoin the track. Well, fresher tyres in a much faster car as well. We know uh, the, the aggressive nature of Kevin Magnussen. He's going to try and make, make a move already into the next to the chicane. He's not quite close enough to make a move on the back of the Williams, which do look, unfortunately, to be continuing their descent down the order still with the Honda engine. They're still going to be pretty quick in a straight line. And now Kevin there with the DRS going to force the Williams to go defensive. And Kevin can try and look here around the outside line, but the Williams parked it perfectly there on the racing line. A good defensive drive there from that Williams. Because it might, it might, it might still be full position. Now looking back up front now with Fernando Alonso, but led all the race so far. Now he's coming in now, and this may actually work out in favour here for the Renault outfit. Because of course, K-Mag, he came in a lap early trying to get the undercut. If he's being held up in the traffic, the time that he will lose behind the slower cars is more than he could gain on the fresher tyres. And that's his set of medium tyres as well for the three-time world champion. The, the, the yellow tyres, of course, really matching the. Uh, the yellow and black of the Renault car. I really do like how it looks black from the side and completely yellow from the front. Almost in a way, it looks kind of like the 2010 car, really. They rejoin back out track, and crucially for Alonso, he's back in clean air. He cleared all these cars and came out lost low time else for maybe even five, six seconds to the Spaniard. I think he's still in the net second position, though. I don't see where any, any of the front running cars yet, but still, there's a lot of traffic now in between K Mag and Fernando Alonso. Alonso might even be able to might be able to cruise now through the second stage and save his tyres, which is going to work out as an even bigger benefit later on. Now, onto lap 10, we're now leading the Grand Prix because we've got ourselves and Lando Norris as the only driver who's inside the top 10 yet to be. We've got Charles Leclerc up there in P5, which I'm pretty sure is where Ferrari were thinking they would be somewhere about this season. Although that's not a legitimate pace to make because they're still yet to stop. Now, they're now into the pit lane, going to steam away, but get, get slowed down just about before the pit line because you don't want to get a, uh, a penalty for speeding here at the first time of asking, especially we're in, when we could be in a championship fight. It looks like with Renault at the moment, but you know Red Bull, you can never count them out. And Toyota, once they get on top of their issues, is definitely going to be coming back at us now as well. It's going to be a set of media ties for, us, for ourselves as well, so we split the strategy here at Alfa Romeo. Bring Kamegi first, try and put Alonso under pressure. And we can, we can start later because of course all the cars will be stuck in slower traffic as well. And coming back up now onto the track. 
I got a bit of a bad there behind me. So we managed to actually jump Kalag. He's lost so much time behind all of these slower cars with the, the Ferraris, the Aston Martins, the Williams. He's lost so much time that we've now jumped him. I think that might be us now actually up now into P2. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure Kemba was in second place first. And indeed it is. We've got Fernando Alonso there, who's the net race leader. He's coming up now behind the Toyota of Nobuharu Masushita. Didn't even make it into Q3, such is the struggles for the Japanese driver. With those electrical gremlins that Toyota have been experiencing. Now DRS then for Fernando Alonso on the back of Matsushita. He's going to stay behind his Matsushita, going to go defensive. He goes ahead and he comes into the pit lane. That, that, can, that can really put you off. You ride up behind, you miss your breaking point, end up steaming off through the chicane. There's now, is this, is this going to be a one star strategy here for Toyota? I'm going to try and do something to salvage some, some points in this weekend. The defending constructive champions, if I might remind you. So they now have to build a car. But it's not working out to him from too well so far. It's going to be another set of medium size. So Matsushita doing the same strategy as what we're doing. Just doing it in backwards. Because instead of going soft, medium, medium. Going medium to another set of mediums then to a set of soft. It'll be really fast at the end of the race. So that's actually what, what Toyota might need. And it's going to come out now with the with the other runner there, Vestemite Ocon. Who's not had, he's had a bit of a quiet race so far. Definitely been shown up by his teammates so far. In some you know Ocon does have pace at the back end of last year, so still probably struggling to re-acclimatise re himself with that Renault car. And again, Alonso will be in the same boat as well, a new car for him to get used to after being three years out, so the, the raw talent of Alonso there showing through. Oh, a nice nose count here from Esteban Ocon. You know, he's going to try and keep Masashita at bay. Masashita might have a slower car at the moment, but the fresher tyres might be enough to cancel that out. Now then, on to lap 21, so over halfway through this race now, We've dropped k -Mag behind, he's now 11 and a half seconds behind, and we're really are now getting on Fernando Alonso. So Alonso, look at it, he's been able to save his time, he's not having to push things too much. We've been pushing like a stabbed rat to catch up to the three-time champion and our championship rival in what we all thought was his last season back in 2018. It was me and Alonso going for the title then, and now we're we going to get a reaping. We're both in different teams now than we were back then, but still, when we're together on track, it just seems we just, we just elevate each other to that next level. And you also got Sergio Sete Camaro still in P4, still the lead Red Bull Associates driver in this race, still showing up Max Verstappen and Alex Albon, has to be said as well. But now then, Alonso comes in now for his second after Alonso coming in early because he stopped earlier than what we did for us. So we still got a few more laps to push on on this set of medium tyres. There's going to be a set of another set of medium tyres there for Fernando Alonso to take him to the end of the Grand Prix. Of course, barring any safety cars, we might all dive in for another set of softs with that Renault DP World car now. Why don't you come out still, maybe even in second place, because you cut out, because you lose more than 11 seconds in the pits, with how much time you, you gain back cutting out these few corners. He might not be in second place, but he still gains a bit of time. He still comes out in free air, crucially. And you've got the Red Bull then of Max Verstappen. So Sergio Tete Camera might actually come in the pits still as well, but Red Bull, the, 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 they're the building a bit back on race pace, at least, if, if it, even if it wasn't there for them on qualify. But now it's lap 25, we're now catching up to lap a Ferrari. Ferrari have gone so far down the order, without coming up to lap one of the records. I mean, I get it, they've probably made their second stop, and I haven't yet. Still 25 laps into a Grand Prix. One of the, of the Scuderia Ferraris is in range of being laps, and by a car that they supply their engine to. They're going to have to be in many late nights back at, back at Maranello now, having the, the embarrassment of potentially even being lapped. Now, they go around the final corner. We come into the pits once again, just about getting stopped before... Yeah, the pit line, so we're just going to maximise the opportunity attacking the pit lane. I you, you mean, you, you lose. You gain so little time, but you can lose so much time going so cautious into it that you have to attack it every single time. And it's going to be a set of the soft tyres now. Go, so Alfa Romeo thinking a bit different now, going very aggressive. Remember, we went long on the first stint, we went long on the second stint. We're going to a set of soft tyres now. We've got the fastest tyres we have. We've got one of the fastest cars on the grid, it looks like, at this moment in time. We've got some really good straight line speed as well from that Ferrari engine. So now we've got 10 laps in the now to push like mad and try and catch up to Alonso. And in P3 is Sergio Sete Camera, the Brazilian, the F2 champion. The man who should be already being a Red Bull, at the words of their driver advisors, currently running in a podium place in an Alfa Tauri team which haven't been anywhere near the podium in any of their guises since 2016. Now I'm really looking from one of the Red Bull back teams to the main Red Bull team now then. We've got Max Verstappen now. Actually got a bit of yellow flags there, so there's a bit of an incident up front. Like Verstappen, he's going a bit slow. He says, is he going slow? He looks like he's going slow. There's an issue here for the Red Bull. Uh, if he couldn't get back to us from Red Bull, they're being beat by the Alfa Tauris. Now they've got some technical issues now in this first race of the season. Verstappen now going very slow. He's got a puncture as a suspension issue. Either way, he pulls off to the side of the track there. That might even be a suspension. There's no smoke coming out of the car. So it looks like something mechanical's broken. 
but nothing to do there with the engine at least. But now looking at the midfield fight here, got the Aston, one of the Aston Martins here holding up one of the Williams. Because these cars are all the back of the grid, they're still going to be all very competitive towards themselves. Remember, it's the top 12 who score points. So with the midfield teams, there's still a chance that they score a point. A one point is the difference between finishing ninth, tenth, or eighth in the constructors. Now we've got the Williams here trying to go around the outside line of Sergio Perez. They're going to make it stay there under breaking. Perez and Key back inside and goes for a massive dive bomb. On his former teammate from Force India, Nico Hulkenberg. Of course, they're going to be good friends off track, but they're going to be very good rivals on the track. And next to now we've got you know we've got Sergio Perez there with the DRS as it was so is it Hulk with the DRS still and Hulk gets the DRS to pull away so very very lucky there for Hulkenberg gets the DRS to pull away he was behind at the detection point and then gets even more DRS to pull away but it is still a double detection point here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve and Hulkenberg has been dropped by the Renault outfit now back to where he started his Grand Prix career with Williams back in 2010 so he's gone full circle he's back where he started he's going to look to try and score some much needed early points here for the the British outfit. It's not over yet for Sergio Perez. Now we've got the other Williams, one of, one of the home favourites, Nicholas Latifi now getting on in. The Canadian on his home race. Going getting out on the back of the Aston Martin. Going to go for a pull to his arms. Perez squeezes him as much as he can. Trying to keep the nose in. He gets a compromise line. Both of them get a compromise line. And you've got one of the Ferraris now. Charles Leclerc coming up behind now. With the DRS can go move. move, move. Got Latifi going outside. So it could be three wide now. We've got Harry Anto actually in the Ferrari. Going for three wide into turn one. Give it a house. No contact between all of them. Got Harry Anto still holding it around the outside line. Still keeping it three wide. Going to get squeezed out there. Which is the way the corner goes. And Perez there loses out to Nicholas Latifi. But Harry Anto looks like he's coming alive now at the end of this race. He, 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 remember, he, he lost his seat to Mick Schumacher for the for this season, and, he, he, and he's going to be thinking now he could be up there near the podium now. We're seeing where Mick Schumacher and Lando Norris have been so far, but in a Ferrari, you can't pass up an opportunity to drive for Ferrari, whether at the front or the back. Now, as Paris got some sort of issue, he's losing quite a bit of time, so maybe his tyres have gone off now. Of course, this being the first year that Aston Martin have actually had to design their own car to use the chassis of what was the previous Haas team last year. Of course, to have an opportunity to have a viable competitive car once again, that wasn't an opportunity to use that chassis again this year. But no, on to lap 33, it's took this whole time, it's took what, 8 or 9 laps? Well, we are now back. Back up we're now with Fernando Alonso, we're on fresher tyres, well, yeah, we're on fresher tyres, but his, Alonso's tyres will wear out less than ours, so I say the grip level is about the same now, as things stand. And we've still got Sergio Tetecamero, still holding onto that P3, you've got Aston Martin blocking the track, what are you doing there? Lance Stroll, daydreaming on the racing line, they're coming so close to contact, so close to a DNF, and he's getting involved here with the leaders as well. Surely that, that, that must be a penalty, surely, for Lance Stroll coming in, I think, he's, I think he's at the back anyway. So things can't really get much worse for him, but still, you get points on your license this early on, because not going to be a good omen for the rest of the season. And now gaining with the DRS on the back. Of our championship rival from three years ago, our championship rival for 2021. We get a bit of a point there, just can't get a little bit screwily under braking because the tyres now are going to be starting to go off. We're still having to push this car through these corners as fast as we can. We go from purple there through the final sector. So we're getting some really good speed here in the straight line. We know this car is so quick in a straight line anyway. We're just gaining now on the back. Off and on, we've got two laps of the tracks left to go lap 34 and then lap 35. Alonso, he's not put a foot on all race, and then again, neither way. We didn't have the best qualifying. Maybe if we started where our teammate came out did in P2, we could have had a better shot. Maybe might even be leading the Grumpy by now, but it's all. Or F1 is if spelled backwards. And we lose a bit of time. This middle section of the lap, this, this part of the lap's never been good to me, no matter what season. That chicane of this straight here has always been my weakness on this circuit. Don't it? This my driving style just never works with that chicane for some reason. And now we've got another DRS, so there's three still, we've got three DRS here around the circuit. Okay, you know the back, we're going to go for a massive dive into the head, and gave back as much time as we can on the Spaniard, because there's no way you're going to fluster a three-time world champion. But you know, he he has made mistakes in the past, but he's still, heck, yeah, has he still got his composure? He's still got that competitive edge, he's had it in terms of raw speed, but he's still got it into wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat, now gaining on the back. Off and out, Alonso coming down into the final, going to have a think about making a dive, going very late, but guys, Esteban Oco, no, the one of the runners, though, out of the Grand Prix. Esteban Oco, the one to his team, and now... No, is that going to be a scare now for the Renault team? I mean, it's going to be now. It has Alonso got the same issue? Has Alonso got any issues with his car now? Because we haven't seen what happened to Esteban Ocon here. We're not seeing any polluted smoke anywhere, so he's still not catching up. That's why he's retired. But if he's pulled out in a DRS zone, that may have just saved Fernando Alonso. So Ocon may have played the master class, road to glory, teammate strats here, sacrificing himself for the greater good of the team. Now, through this first set, we're still keeping the close we can. Shondo, though, 
And this is where Ocon's pulled off their bridge where Max Verstappen is. So maybe the same issues happened to him as well. They're not seeing any, any smoke or any oil or anything. So maybe maybe the curves or something just maybe broke part of the car. They're trying to keep it into line. Using much rhythmus to go. Not got much rhythmus left to save. We've got a, a lot of batteries as well. So still keeping that overtake mode engaged. Using, using as much of the battery as we can. We've not got to save anything. We've got half the battery to use now. Got one straight left to go. They're catching up to more lap traffic now. That could give Alonso DRS. It's all about now Sergio Perez. Sergio Perez in the Aston Martin could decide the outcome of this race. We've got one straight left to go. One DRS straight left to go. Now good DRS now wide open. But he's going to be safe for Alonso as well. Okay, now on the back of Sergio Perez as well. His Perez is going to have to slow on the brakes now. He's going to be on the way to final corner. He's going to pull his up block. Because now we're going to be in the back. We hit the back of the Aston Martin. That's it over. That's it, the Perez blocks the race line. What are you doing, man? Well, Fernando Alonso wins on his Formula 1 return. We managed to, cru crucially still, we don't take off a wheel. We only lost the front wing. We crossed the line in second place. But Sergio Perez, what, did you, do the Aston Martins have mirrors on their cars? Could they not afford them? I know they're, I know they're on the smallest budget. But surely you've got to do something to, to actually give the drivers some vision to see where they're going. But it's Fernando Alonso, serial beats were there, looking very, very happy. And now maybe in a bit of a sigh of relief as well to bring Alonso back to the Endstone based team. And again, that's why they're at the final corner there as well, that straight. I don't know, it's a Fernando Alonso though, on top of the world, on his Formula 1 return as well. It's almost like he's never been away. He's not lost any of the competitive energy. He's got a little bit lucky there at the end as well. But that's what it is with lap traffic. Sometimes, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Take a look at the end results for the first round of the 2021 season. Hopefully you like the new graphics I'm going with for this year. Having the uh, the winner on there, trying to keep it more how it looks like in real life. But it's Fernando Alonso that takes the win and the 20 points with ourselves in the end two and a half seconds back after that end contact with Perez. We've really not had much luck to that final chicane this weekend ever. But I do get the, the, the point there for fast laps, so it's still minimise damage as much as they can. And Sergio Seti Camara, the Brazilian, gets his first podium in Formula 1 for Alpha Tauri. Just managing to hold off her teammate came out. Which is still in a very good P4. Only four tenths behind the podium. It was a really good drive from Alex Albon in the end. The tyre driver coming up to finish in P5. As the lead and the only finishing of the main Red Bull team. You've got Mick Schumacher finishing in 6th place as the lead of the McLarens. And McLaren being 30 seconds behind the win with the car that they can't upgrade. Then you have to uh, have a few late nights in the factory to try and find something to optimise that car. And got Lewis Hamilton. Lead Toyota down in P7. They're going to have to really, really work out their issues too for the defending constructors champions if they're to mount another title assault this year. We've got Pierre Gasly with, with a good PA finish, a double points finish for Alpha Tauri. And that's not just something that's happened all too often, even when they were Tarasso either. So, good signs there for the Italian Alpha that are on the road to recovery. We've got Landon Norris finishing in ninth place in the second of the McLarens with Daniel Kvyat P10 in the Mercedes. Masashita finishes where he started in P11 in the Toyota, and it's a double points finish for Merck, with George Russell bringing over the final point in 12th. Having a quick look now at the driver's standings, of course, you still get points for qualifying as well. Three points for pole, two for second, one for third, but on a wildcard race, it's five points for pole. So it's Alonso that leads with a near maximum 23 points. And he's got a seven point lead now over ourselves. On 16, there's Sergio Sete Camara. In third place in the Alpha Tauri on 12, joint with K Mag. But on better result, that puts Sergio in front. Then you have Alex Albon P5 on 8 points along with Mick Schumacher. Then you've got Lewis Hamilton P7 on 6, Gasly 8th on 5, and Norris P9 on 4. Then 3 points to Kvyat, 2 for Matsushita, and Russell, just like in the race, rounds off the top 12. Renault may be leading in the Drivers' Championship, but his Alfa Romeo have first blood in the Constructors, of course with Ocon's DNF helping our cause. 28 points for Alfa Romeo, 5 point lead over Renault on 23. And Alfa Tauri is being third in the Drivers' and also in third in the Constructors' Championship as well. In P3, a really good opening race for Alfa Tauri on 17 points, 5 points clear then of McLaren. you have got Red Bull P5 with the 8 points that Alex Albon took in this race. Joint on points there with Toyota. And we've got Mercedes on four, leaving three teams yet to score with Williams, Ferrari, and Aston Martin. So that being the opening round to this 2021 season, looks like it's gonna be a really heated championship battle with ourselves, Alonso, Ocon, K-Mag, maybe even Sergio Tete as well. And when the Rebels and Toyota get their act together as well, 
be a very, very tasty battle, I'm thinking now. If you enjoyed this opening round of the season, please leave a like on this video, leave a comment down below about your thoughts on this race, what you thought about that Emirates contact, with Perez blocking us there at the end, what you thought of the racing incident, or Perez should have gone out of the way a lot earlier. You also, you can vote for your driver of the day as well, with a poll link that will be in, in the video description, along with a link to the Wikia for this championship, championship season, I'm sure you know what Wikia is, it's basically Wikipedia for fan-made fandom stuff. And I've, I edit that myself after each race. I've done it since the 2014 season, so there's about 77 pages, I think. You've got every team, every driver to have been in since 2014. It takes a lot of work as well to edit that myself, so I'd appreciate if you could go and give that a look as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.